Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Oh, it's so good to be here with you. Hi. Okay. I have an interesting topic to cover this week. So I was talking with a friend recently who weighs and measures her food and doesn't eat any sugar or flour. And I was traveling. I was in New York City at the time. And I don't know how we got on this subject, but I was talking about, I just ran out of salt. You know, I bring a little shaker of salt. I was eating a meal out of my hotel room and I went on a hunt for little salt packets. And she was like, oh, I don't use the salt packets because they contain sugar. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, they're putting sugar in salt these days. Haven't you noticed? And so I got to this little corner store and they had little packets of salt. And sure enough, the second ingredient was sugar. It was salt, dextrose, potassium iodide were the three ingredients in the salt. Sugar was the second ingredient. And I started hunting around at the grocery store and it was either dextrose or sometimes sucrose was in the salt as the second or third ingredient. So um, yeah, I started hunting around. I did a Google search. I mean, my first reaction was really? Are you serious? <laughs> like they're putting sugar in everything now. They're putting sugar in mayonnaise. They're putting sugar in mustard. They're putting sugar in pasta sauce. They're putting sugar in salad dressing. They're putting sugar in bread. And now they're putting sugar in salt. Like, do they have no shame? Is there any limit to what they will put sugar in? They're putting sugar in table salt. Okay, so that was my first reaction. What I found when I looked under the hood was a lot less uh, malicious and pernicious than that. So here's the deal. Yes, they're putting sugar in salt, but not all salt. So the white table salt that comes in little shakers and little packets will these days in about 70 countries most often have sugar in it. Um, there is no sugar in sea salt in pink Himalayan salt, um, in any sort of sea salt, or in salt that is not iodized. So there's a reason they're putting sugar in salt, and the reason has to do with iodine. So iodine is a necessary nutrient, especially for children, but it's really important, and people are often deficient in it. And someone cooked up a way to get more iodine out to people and into our bodies, and that is to put it in salt. So this is a good thing. This is, you know, one of these little hacks that modern life makes possible to reduce suffering and diseases of all kinds. So we need iodine, we're not getting enough of it. So they put it in salt, problem solved. The problem is that iodine evaporates out of the salt really easily, okay? Uh, and so they put sugar in to trap the iodine as it vaporizes off and retain it in the salt. It's a very, very small amount. Now, to make matters a little more complicated, it's not all over the place that you'll find sugar in the salt. Like, not all of these 70 countries that are iodizing their salt will have sugar in it. It looks to be just about only in the United States, and the reason is that in the United States, the form of iodine that's being put in the salt is Ki or potassium iodide. And potassium iodide is not stable. It's the kind of iodine that evaporates off, okay? Iodine is, is a, an element. It's, it's literally on the periodic table of the elements. It's atomic number 53. It's an element, all right? Um, but you can't just put it in salt directly. You need to put it in a form that can be put in there. And so potassium iodide is the form that's required in the United States by the Food and Drug Administration. The rest of the world seems to be using potassium iodate, which is stable and doesn't require any sugar, therefore, to stabilize it and keep it in the salt. It stays in there on its own because it's stable. It's not vaporizing off. So the rest of the world is able to have salt potassium iodate as their ingredients in their salt. In the United States, it's salt, dextrose, potassium iodide. Well, I can't find any reason why the Food and Drug Administration in the United States is requiring that we use this other form of iodine, uh, but thus it is, and so we have sugar in our salt. For those of us who are 
committed to avoiding sugar in our diets, do we care? Does this matter? Well, I've been on the wires asking around. I have never heard of it uh, triggering anyone. And I eat a lot of salt. I don't know if you know, I have a condition called neurocardiogenic syncope, which is fancy term for fainting syndrome, which means I'm prone to passing out. And I've been informed by multiple doctors that I need to be consuming an extra 6,000 milligrams of salt a day in my diet. Not kidding, it's a lot. And so I salt my food very heavily. If you ever eat with me, you will notice I am putting way too much salt on my food. Um, but that is for a medical condition. My blood, my blood pressure runs about 80 over 50, 85 over 55. Sometimes when it's high, 95 over 60. It never gets above that really. Um, and yeah, I just need a lot of salt in my diet to stay upright. Um, so all that to say, I've eaten iodized salt, non-iodized salt and everything in between. And, uh, I am not experiencing any triggering from it. I've tasted it. It's not sweet at all. The amounts are not listed. I believe they're minimal. Uh, all that I can find is that it's a very small amount. Uh, the sugar in the salt. Um, and on the nutritional label, you know, uh, the serving size on, on the salt nutritional label is so small that it wouldn't show up anyway. You know, it's zero calories from carbohydrate. It's no added sugars on the nutritional label. It's, it's negligible. It's not showing up. Um, I'm of a mind to not worry about it. And, you know, the salt doesn't taste sweet. It tastes salty. <laughs> um, but if you are concerned about it, then the easy solution is to avoid the iodized salt, to just eat sea salt instead. That might mean, if you're gonna be really fastidious about it, that you bring your own salt with you, where, you know, if you wanna be salting your food, you don't trust the table salt on a restaurant table and you don't use salt packets and you bring your own salt if you wanna salt your food. That's one way to go about it. Um, again, I don't think it's a problem. I've never heard it being a problem. Post down in the comments down below if you've ever been triggered by the sugar that's in salt. Uh, I don't know, I've never heard it being a problem. So I think it's a tiny amount. Remember, sugar is a dose-dependent drug, like all drugs, dose-dependent, meaning tiny, tiny amounts are gonna have tiny, tiny effects, generally speaking. Of course, with addiction, there are by definition, often outsized effects for small doses, right? The one sip of alcohol that leads to a bender for an alcoholic. And so we do need to be mindful for those of us who identify as having food addiction and needing to abstain from sugar categorically in all forms, it's something to keep in mind. Um, so you're absolutely uh, free to abstain from table salt, iodized table salt, if you're concerned about it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know I went down this rabbit hole of investigation because they're putting sugar in our salt these days. Oh my goodness, when will it end? Well, this one at least is for a good reason. Uh, and if you're going to avoid all forms of table salt, iodized salt, I do recommend that you get your iodine in another form. Um, I know that you can get it um, in a liquid form and rub it into your skin. Um, there are probably iodine tablets you can take. So just be sure that you're getting your iodine if you're not gonna get it from your salt. And that's the weekly vlog. I will see you next week.